you say the same about animals was that uh, was that the same answer for two well <laughs> i mean as long as you're not hurting the animal i'm also in favor of animal rights <clears throat> and again i mean uh, <laughs> Uh, excuse me for going over time, but since you are adding to the question here, the, 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 the question here <coughs> has, to, it, I mean, you can argue based on principle, but you can also argue, as Mr. Hijab has done, based on empirical realities. And then the question becomes, how, how many people does this involve? What is the problem here? How large is the problem? Why should we have laws against something that, I mean, a very small minority, and I would like to see the statistics on how many Norwegians are traveling to Denmark to have sex with animals. And what animals, by the way? I mean, this becomes sort of absurd discussion. Thank you. So I will take one question to Mohammed Hijab. This actually, it feels like it's a follow-up question. Um, the individual is asking, how does Islam uh, regard these kinds of matters, uh, sexual relationships with uh, the same gender and with uh, animals? And uh, why do you believe that, that, that your moral views are correct? First of all, I find it quite interesting that you find amputation of hands disgusting. But when we're talking about having sex with dogs and cats and horses, this is not something that maybe makes you feel disgusted. The problem is, he said, well, you'd have to see if the dog, or whatever animal it is, I'm not sure if he said dog, um, is harmed or not. But how can a dog consent when they can't even speak? Is he going to bark? Is he, how, 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 how's he going to say? How you, how, seriously, I, I want to have sex with you, dog. How, how? Two dogs for yes and one, one bark for... How are you going to know? I mean, this, this, is the this is the absurdity of consent theory and liberalism. You know, seriously, I mean, where do we draw the line? And frankly, this shows you how much liberalism and human rights are creatures of convention. They are subjective. They are baseless. They're just basically what white people, sorry to say, what white people find okay. What white people find tasty. What for, what, the sensibilities of the white people. That's what, li literally, sorry to say, that is liberalism in a nutshell. Sens white man's, not even woman for the, for the most part, white man's sensibilities subjective um, preferences. Yeah, it's okay for a brother and sister to have sex, but cutting the hand of the thief. No, uh, no, 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 that, that's, come on, man. I mean, who, who's, who's made this the uh, parameters, the correct parameters? For us, it's, it's, a, it's a straightforward um, thing. And when I say white man, I'm not meaning that derogatorily. I'm meaning that quite physically in the sense that the 1948 Convention of Human Rights, the ones who had the, the biggest say in that were American white men because America emerged as a superpower and it was in charge of those particular institutions and still is disproportionately considering the size of China and Russia, by the way. And there's lots of literature on that. And I'm sure he's aware of it. So when we say the new world order and the white man is in control of the um, basically the preferences that we the rest of the world, we should be shaped in the image and the mold of the white man post enlightenment experience. This is the reality. So you can have sex with a dog, potentially, right? He didn't want to really say it. You can have sex with your mum and your dad. Sorry, children are here. Or your brother or your sister. You can have, enjoy your, your time, freedom. But, you know, this thing about cutting the hand, I don't know about that. It's disgusting. Oh, well, who's giving us the... I mean, to be honest, it's like, I eat this, I, I drink that. It's all a matter of taste now. It's become a bit ridiculous. You can't force your taste on me. I like Somali food. You might like Viking food. <laughs> you might like Norwegian. I don't know what they eat here. You can't tell me you have to eat the sausage and this egg. And no, oh, come on. I don't find that nice. We say the murajah or the one who finally determines which is acceptable moral recourse and what is not acceptable to answer the question is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is God Almighty. And we have good reason to believe God exists. God exists. We have good reason to believe the Prophet Muhammad is, is the actual final prophet. He gives evidences for that and so divine command theory would suggest that whatever comes from this is eternally true which by the way can adjust in terms of time and place but that's part of the eternally true mechanism and that's how we live our lives sexual matters financial matters and so on and so forth like i said if you want guidance 
you have to seek guidance from the one who knows all guidance, which we believe is God.